Men of Reddit, when have you experienced sexism? Story 1. I almost got mobbed at the park because my kid had a fit and they thought I was kidnapping her. I am a dad. One day I took my wife to the waxing place to get pampered at her request. So I took my daughter, who was three at the time, to go play at a local park. I opted to follow along with her and join her little games. We wandered around the playground and I helped her when she needed me and otherwise let her have a good time. The entire time I'm getting dirty looks from parents and people audibly making crude comments. Then comes the text from my wife that she's all done and it's time to pick her up. This is where crap goes down. Now I don't wear a wedding ring as I do a lot of manual tasks that could otherwise get caught up on a ring. So I tell my daughter that it's time to leave. So like any three-year-old that's been told to stop having fun, she loses her mind. I tell her it's time to go get mommy and she's still crying and screaming. I don't want to go. Don't make me leave. She yells such that everyone can hear. She's tugging at my hand that is now around her wrist, tugging her along as she throws a fit. Meanwhile, everyone who was staring at me before is now on alert and is eyeing me like a mob ready to kill. One guy starts walking toward us like he's going to kick my ass. The entire group of adults looks at me following my movements like some robotic zombie monster. I tell her, honey, we have to go pick up mommy. And she finally yells, but daddy, I don't want to leave. All I can think is, thank God, she said, daddy. Suddenly the guy stops and all the heads simultaneously turn back to what they were doing like the monsters can't sense me anymore. The zombies suddenly lose interest. My heart was racing, thinking I was going to be mobbed. Finally, I tell her, we can come back after we pick up mommy. Only then does she calm down and walk with me. I guess you can't be a dad out with your kid. You have to be a pet pal. If it was my wife, no one would have so much as looked up. I know because on the return trip, she had a fit again. But it was my wife this time tugging her along. They were invisible to the surrounding parents. Story 2. Story time. I went on a date with a woman, one date. I had a rough day at work, had dinner to go to after work, and by the time I got home, I was exhausted, so I went to sleep. I woke up to about 30 messages from this woman. I give up. You creep. Screw you for ignoring me. I'm so hurt. Etc, etc. I was sleeping. Needless to say, the next day I texted her to say I wasn't interested in a second date. She lost it. Started sending me pics of guys in their c**ks with, he's been begging to hook up with me going to sleep with him, and multiple insane messages with insults, etc. She threatened to send some rather risky pics of me to my workplace, which she didn't know what it was, so I wasn't concerned. A few days later, a knock on my door. Two police officers, investigating her claims that I had been threatening her and threatened to share her pics, neither of which I did. I was treated as a complete dirtbag by the police. Not only did they not review her text history before coming to arrest me, but they were also even hesitant. The texts I was showing them were real, and it was a real eye-opener. A woman can accuse a man of anything, and the burden of proof isn't even on them. It's on the man. And for what it's worth, I still have the text history saved if people want proof. Story 3. Was in a loud argument with my emotionally and occasionally abusive girlfriend. It took place in a parking lot outside her apartment. She was hammered and yelling at me about something as we pulled up to a spot. She took my phone out of the car and threw it across the lot. I angrily walked over and got it, walked up to her to show her what damage she caused. She then started hitting me and scratching me. This was at night, mind you. So out of nowhere, a guy comes running over and grabs her and calls me a dirtbag. They walk off, and as I try to make sense of this, I see a girl not far away on the phone saying, Yeah, there's this guy, and he's punching his girlfriend in the face. Police show up, I get arrested, and for whatever reason, the cops drove my car to my house from her apartment, which was three miles away. No tow. They just got it and drove it. Meanwhile, my girlfriend is taken by squad car to my house as well. I get into the station for booking, and it's the first time cops see me in a well-lit area. I was wearing a tank top because it was summer, and I had scratches that were so deep they were starting to bleed. The cop's eyes became as big as quarters and said, If we would have seen this before, she would have been here instead of you. I said, Well, maybe you'll do your job next time. Take me in. I was arrested Friday and got out Monday. Not sure if this relates or not, but I typed all this out in my phone and I don't want to delete it. Story 4 Well, here goes, I guess. I lived across the street from a now ex friend, we'll call her Laura, who had a new daughter that we'll call Penny. A year and some change, slightly relevant that the father was not in the picture. Now I'm usually not a kid person. Any of them below 8th grade or so are like kryptonite to me. For whatever reason, I love this kid. She had a smile that melted my heart and made whatever paternal instincts I have kicked in. The full bore would lay down my life to make sure this little rugrat was okay. 
Always watched Penny when Laura had to work or go to class since I was a bartender at the time and had most of the day off. My then-girlfriend was always home as well, so it was fun to look at the whole baby idea. We'd go to the park and take nice strolls around the neighborhood. Then one day, my then-girlfriend left the house to go run some random task and it was just myself hanging out with Penny. Laura got home early and came to pick her up, put her hair into the customary time-to-go forehead ponytail thing, because it's funny, damn you, and handed her over when her ma got to the door and had that how-did-the-day-go chit-chat. Eventually, Laura asked where my girlfriend was and went silent when I told her she was out and about, snatched up all the baby gear without a word, and practically booked it across the street. Very long story I'll condense from here on out. We didn't get to watch Penny anymore, which broke my heart, and our interaction with Laura stopped, which was fine because I'm a stubborn bastard and will play the cold shoulder game until the day I die. A couple of months later, it came out that Laura was fine with both the girlfriend and I watching Penny, but not me by myself because I'm sure you saw it coming. I'm a guy and inherently a pedophile and would abuse her child the first moment I could get. Yeah, I still miss the little booger. Story 5. I know that I'm far from alone in this, but I've gotten it to public places. I am an involved dad. When my oldest daughter was young, I would take her to ballet class. While we waited for her class, I'd grab a storybook, she'd sit in my lap, and I would read. I'm an expressive reader. Kids love it. And I would invariably have multiple little girls hanging around me, trying to get up into my lap so they could see. And I would just cringe from the looks around the room, even when I was actively discouraging it. Honey, I'm not your dad. I don't think your mom wants you to sit with me. Eventually, the moms got to know me and decided I was okay. But it was not comfortable for a while. At the park, I pushed my kids on swings, chased them around, etc., other kids tend to want to join in. I have to be super careful, or else I'll get everything from the stink eye to rude comments. And of course, the condescending comments are the best. No, lady, I'm not a weekend dad. I'm not giving their poor mother a break. I'm here 24-7, 365. I spend time with my kids every day, and they look forward to sharing moments. Bite me. Story 6. Was walking my puppy. I live near a preschool. Kids all want to pet him. Obviously, because he was ridiculously adorable. He had a really great time answering the children's questions and helping the ones who were a bit scared say hello to him, etc. I had a trauma when I was young and did not get to be a kid myself, so seeing their childlike wonder is amazing. I want to work with kids, help them any way I can for them to have a good childhood as a mentor or teacher. Eventually, two female staff came over to check what the fuss was all about. When they see me, they start asking me all these questions. Why are you here? What do you want? Why are you interacting with the kids? How old are you? Eventually, one took me to the side and said it is very troubling that I do this and that I should just walk away. She sounded like she was making a threat. So me and the puppy took our leave. The kids were rightfully disappointed and to this day, I don't walk that way anymore. It's not the first time I've interacted with kids and something like this has happened. One kid was lost in the store. He was obviously scared and asked me to hold his hand. So I took his hand and walked him to find his mother. We found her, and she gave me the most horrible look I've ever gotten from someone. My fear of being accused of being a pedophile has put my dream of helping kids to a stop. I was abused as a child, and to be accused of doing what that person did to me, I can't take it. Story 7 I came to this a bit late, and I know this will get buried, but this is the first thing that's ever genuinely applied to me. I work in a business development center for a car dealership. I genuinely enjoy the job, pays decent for my age, and I work with my fiancé. Keep in mind we have monthly goals and commissions and I'm almost always the top performer in the room, which is predominantly females. I've always been able to tell that my boss has been a bit sexist. However, it becomes very clear when I get called out for things the females can do whenever they please. For instance, if I touch my phone while I'm there, I get talked to. If I say something a little off on the phone, I get talked to. The girls in the room are blatantly on their phones and shopping online while on the clock. The girls can come in 45 minutes after the shift starts. I came in late 3 minutes after texting her because of a snowstorm, and she gives me crap. Also, every time I have to talk to her about something work-related, she always groans and sounds like I'm being an inconvenience. And when the girls do the same, she peps up her voice and kisses their asses. I wish I could describe to you how much this bothers me every day. But sexism toward males doesn't exist, right? Story 8. Conscription. Women don't have it. I'm not against it, by the way. I think it should be universal. Conscription. Women's physical tests, if they choose to serve, are a freaking joke. This leads to chicks with excellent scores being destroyed when they're put in with people who are actually in good shape and the whole unit suffers. Meanwhile, it's hailed as equality and a victory for feminism by people who don't have to wait for the squad leader to catch the hell up with them. 
because she was told she was in excellent condition. Gender quotas, because Jesus Christ, screw that. Get those for sewer divers, bin men, and street cleaners as well. Didn't hit me personally, but two of my friends did. Major ass. And one of them turned rather bitter because of it. Took him a while to get over the issue. Man up, be a man, whenever said by a woman. Basically, it means, treat me special, sacrifice yourself, submit. Again, screw that. We're all equal. Woman the hell up. A couple of times, there's been a drunk woman who has attacked a man in the bar. People have asked me to intervene and protect her. Screw that. We're equal now. She got herself into that situation, so she'll bear the consequences. A chick once even tried to punch me because I said something along those lines. Now I'm over 90 kilograms. A military police officer during conscription powerlifter with 12 years of martial arts and assorted bollocks. This girl was much lighter than me and no real threat. But as she was swinging, all I could think of was, no guy would ever do this. Again, not me, since I have no kids. But I've seen a man lose his children because of messed up custody legislation. The depression was crushing and there was nearly nothing I could do to help him despite trying. Luckily, he finally decided not to kill himself. All in all, it could be worse, I guess. I've stopped really caring about most of the stuff. I used to be really salty. Just avoid obvious dangers like marriage and kids without a prenup. Legal pitfall. Avoid crazy people. Since, as a man, you'll always be the suspect if anything ever happens. And enjoy your life. Just ignore all that much sexism stuff, since nobody actually cares about it if a man claims to have suffered from it. Story 9. Where to even begin? In every job I've worked in. My first job was a stock boy at a convenience store. I was young and was trying to do something part-time to save up for university. I stayed with that job till about second year university. At that point, I was the weekend manager. Anyway, so it was Sunday night, and although normally there were three people working, on that day there were two, me and a lady on cash. It was around 6pm and wasn't busy. A shipment came in which meant that I had to organize it into the freezer and stock whatever was low. Problem was, you couldn't hear the PA in the freezer. I told the lady in the cash that I was going to be in the freezer, that I would step out every 10-15 to 15 minutes to check up on her. I went in, then checked up on her, and it was fine. The second time I came out, she ran up to me and screamed at me. Some men were here, and I was afraid that they were going to try to rob us, and you weren't there. I said, are they still here? She responded, no. Did they try to rob us? She said, no, but if they did, I'm a woman. Could have been hurt. You're the man, you should have been there. I kid you not, this is what she said. She then started crying. I apologized and told her that I wouldn't go back to the freezer. However, since she was obviously upset, I offered to let her take a long paid break and that I wouldn't tell the owner that she took this break. And I also offered to let her go home. Instead of taking me up on either of those offers, she sat beside the cash register crying while I helped customers. When I was trying to cash out some customers, some of them said, What the hell did you do to her? What's wrong with you? The next day, the owner sat me down and told me that what I did was wrong and that it was my job to protect her. I sat there going like, protect her from what? Nothing happened. He said, I know, but women need to be protected. I was confused at what was coming out of his mouth. For one thing, I don't even know this woman. And for another, what did he think I was going to do if some guy with a gun came in and wanted all the money in the register? Did he think I would take a bullet for her? Hell no. Anyway, I quit on the spot. In a non-work-related incident, me and a female friend of mine were planning on being roommates and were seeing places together. We went to see this apartment and then we went out for lunch. As we were sitting there eating and talking, my friend stops her conversation and says, Hey, look at that kid. Look at what she's doing. She's so gorgeous. I look over her, start laughing, and said, Oh my god, she's so freaking cute. As I said that, the mother turns around and gives me the nastiest look. I literally felt like I had just raped her daughter. Even my friend noticed the look she gave me. I can go on and on and on and on. It's very common. Story 10. My ex-wife did physically and mentally abuse her son and me during the last 18 months that we lived with her. Physically assaulted my son twice during visitations, then broke into our apartment and attacked me in front of our son. So viciously that he wanted to start punching her. He was 10. Lost all her money unbeknownst to me prior to my filing for divorce. Told our son when he was 10, I hate you and you were never part of my family. I never want to see you again and I hope you rot in hell. The trauma and abuse have thrown him into constant depression and periodic rage and have also caused him to self-medicate with illegal substances. When I left her finally and took my son with me, she had access to 12 credit cards and 6 bank accounts and I had $1,000 to my name. 
She drained every account. She has a master's degree and I have a high school diploma. She doesn't like to work, so I'm responsible for her financial needs. Up until a year ago, she had not paid child support for five years. My son has required constant treatment and medical care for the past two years, during which she has had two drug overdoses. I have completely drained my IRA and have no savings left at all. Despite the divorce decree declaring her partially responsible for medical care and school expenses for our son, the court hasn't forced her to pay a dime because she's lazy and refuses to get a job. After her crazy legal antics during our divorce proceedings, attacking her attorney outside the courtroom, attacking my attorney inside the courtroom, yelling obscenities at me while on the stand, and much more, ended up costing me over $90,000, leaving me $50,000 in debt. She was allowed to reopen our case and pursue much higher maintenance payments. This forced me to declare bankruptcy, and I had to represent myself. The new judge, who didn't bother learning anything about the history of our case and her antics, denied every reasonable motion of mine, including begging for a continuance to take my son to a treatment center out of state and pleading for some financial relief to afford medical treatment for my son. I guarantee you, if a male did all of the above, they'd lock him up and throw away the key. But in my case, I'm forced to pay her $2,000 a month. Get this, for the rest of her life. She only has to pay $312 a month in child support now, but the newest decree is worded as such that I can request money for medical bills. However, the judge made his decree retroactive, so her attorney would just say that I owe back maintenance due to the new order. The original decree, the judge declared that I didn't have to pay any maintenance. However, she fooled this one. I work my ass off to barely pay the bills, can't afford the treatment my son needs, and I have seven years of bankruptcy to get through before I can even dream of doing normal things like buying a home or a car. If I was a woman, things would be much different. Story 11 the one that pissed me off the most was when my daughter was 14, she was having problems with her mother and it was decided that she would come live with me. I lived in another state. I got her moved in and went to enroll her in school. I had the unenrollment papers from her old school that were signed by her mother. I also had her birth certificate, social security card, and immunization records. The new school wouldn't allow me to enroll her until my ex-wife sent a notarized letter stating that I hadn't kidnapped my daughter and that she was allowed to live with me. I was freaking pissed at the double standard. They tried to tell me it was standard procedure for single parents. A single mother that overheard called crap, saying they never required her to do that. Story 12. Just because I like or am good with kids doesn't mean I'm a pedophile who wants to sleep with them. Or another one, I was once at a place where it was strictly enforced that in the cafeteria, the girls had to be in front of the boys in line. Not at all that I'm anti-chivalry, but you could be waiting for 20 minutes in the same spot just because girls came. And the girls usually felt awkward about it as well. What's wrong with equality? Whoever gets to the line first gets served first, regardless of gender. Story 13. My ex used to punch me, a lot. Never in the face, but pretty much everywhere else. When I asked her to stop, she would hit me harder, just because she knew I wouldn't and couldn't do anything about it. She'd even tease me about not fighting back. She would really lay into it, too. When she did it in public, people, friends included, would just assume that I deserved it. I learned to accidentally move so that her knuckles would hit bone, and she'd hurt her own hand while punching me. Yes, this was my first relationship and a long high school and college disaster. I was too young and stupid to just leave. Story 14. My family adopted two high-risk girls aged 11 and 12 when I was 17, and so many people thought it was a bad idea because I was 100% going to rape them. My older and larger female cousin could hit and punch me all she wanted, but when I did it, I was a monster and punished. Seventh grade English teacher would let girls out of class before guys, because guys were rude and girls should get to go to lunch first. I worked at a coffee shop where I was the only guy for a while and taking out the trash and lifting the heavy stuff was just my job because I was best suited for it. It got so bad that I eventually said, well, I'm not doing the dishes or cleaning the bathroom because you guys are more suited for that job. I'm okay with people doing the right job for them and honestly, I like taking out the trash. But when I wasn't working, the trash still got taken out, which means they were capable of doing it. Or worse, they would leave all the trash from the night before so I can take it. My main issue with everything was I had to do more work than anyone else, because I was a guy, and for no other reason. The good news is when I told them off about it, they understood and I never had to clean the bathrooms again, which is by far my least favorite thing in the world. Story 15 About 10 years ago, I was working as a sales manager for a large research firm. My division was sold to another company and a female VP from that company was put in charge of my division. 
My team was made up of five men and two women. Of the five men, three of them were top-performing salespeople. They were animals and crushed their numbers. Slowly over time, the VP found reasons to harass and eventually fire all three and transfer their books of business to females working on another team in her office. She eventually got rid of one more guy in my team and at that point, I called her out on it. Of course, I was laid off a few months later. There was absolutely zero reason those guys should have lost their jobs. They weren't just hitting quota. They were coming in at 130 to 150 percent of a goal every year. It became quite obvious to everyone in the company that she just favored females in sales. About a year after all that happened, a bunch of HR complaints finally caught up with her and she ended up fired.